All right, hi everybody. So we got a uh, Freightliner Cascadia here, Detroit engine, one box emission system. Was unfortunately towed in last night. I believe he was derated to 55. And uh, we always advise our customers in that state, don't shut your truck off if you can't avoid it. I think there was something else that went wrong where he had to shut the truck down. But unfortunately, when he started the truck back up, it was derated to five mile an hour. So we've had this happen a couple times with customers. So if you have that issue and you're trying to get somewhere, don't stop, don't shut the truck off, unfortunately. But anyways, we're gonna get into, like I said, this came in last night, but we haven't done anything yet, haven't hooked up to it yet, so I don't know what's gonna happen here, what we're gonna see. Uh, we're using uh, Jaw Test by Kajali today, one of my favorite softwares. You know, we, we carry a couple of different softwares here in the shop that we use. I mean, it's good to have multiple systems. Some work better than others with certain trucks and certain programming. So this is one of my favorites, just because it's the way that it's very, very intuitive and interactive. So I'm gonna show you a few things here. We're gonna go ahead and get hooked up. Um, my tough pad and then the sleep mode. So uh, we've, we've purchased a Panasonic tough pad because I don't like, I mean, a, a laptop's kind of clinky and big and they go dead fast. So this lasts a couple hours. We got this off of Amazon for I think under $400. So it's so not too bad priced either and it's pretty durable and waterproof. So, so uh, everything's unhooked here. I usually recommend uh, disconnecting. If you got an ELD, like a Y wire or you know jumper like this, I usually disconnect those to get right into the truck system and not through something else. So we plug that in, turn the key on. The hookup is a little time consuming with Jaw Test. I know with some of my other programs, we can select specific modules that we want to load, like just the engine ECM or just the transmission. One of the things with Jaw Test, once we get set up here, it uh, it brings up all the modules, whether you want them or not. So sometimes it can it can take sometimes 10 minutes to load everything up. So so we'll let that do its thing here and uh, see what we got. Okay, so everything's loaded up here. Um, it does take a few minutes since it does load everything on the truck. So we got the uh, CPC uh, module up, exhaust gas uh, after treatment system modules loaded up. And you see there's a lot of faults. Anything in red is currently active. So then uh, obviously, like I said, it loads everything, even your HVAC system, radio, everything. So we're, uh, we're gonna focus up here. So it looks like I had some uh, coolant level issues. Um, that's probably not our major problem here. All right, so what we're gonna focus on here is the uh, SPN 4364, FMI 18, and uh, FMI 1. So those are both uh, NOx conversion, SCR conversion efficiency. But one of them is low, then one of them's very low when it falls you know, below the 70% conversion efficiency. So what happens is you get a D-rate, um, then if you let it go longer, I mean, you get an engine D-rate, then you're going to get a speed D-rate to 55, and then finally you're going to get the, the D-rate to 5 mile an hour, which is you're pretty well done unless you have some method of clearing that. So we're going to go ahead and connect. We're going to connect to that module. Monitoring. And this is a feature, one of the features I like with jaw tests is the uh, monitor, system display on the monitoring. It actually shows you a picture, it shows you what all your sensors are doing. And I always just go through this first just to see if we do have possibly any sensor or wiring issues. I just like to see what everything's reading at, everything's reading correctly. And that's kind of my process of differentiating the, you know, an electrical or sensor issue versus an actual physical problem with uh, with the one box unit. I mean, before we open it up, it kind of directs us where we need to go. Now going back to the fault codes again, 
Um, the other the other fault on here that I forgot to mention when it was on the first page was the uh, the def quantity. Um, so possibly if you had bad def, that would cause these issues. Um, def is pretty finicky. I'm not a big fan of buying def in the boxes or, or containers. It does have a shelf life, so if it's been sitting somewhere or sitting in sunlight, it can degrade the. Uh, the quantity of, uh, of urea in that in the def it needs to be 32.5 percent so um, if it's been sitting over time that can be degraded and it won't do what it's but i mean the, the, the truck's going to know that for one and then it's not going to do what it's supposed to do so that's going to be physically the first thing that i look at on this truck once we uh, start tearing things apart here we're going to go ahead and look in the def tank see if there's any contamination can smell any contamination and then probably do a test of the def as well to see if that's the first place we could start. Now, in order to clear all these D-rates, whether we have a DEF issue, we may have to drain all the DEF, clean it out, clean the system out, refill it. Or if we do have a physical problem with the one box, um, if it hasn't been regen properly, I mean, a lot of places, they're just gonna either throw the sensor on it, clean your DEF or whatever. I mean, we like to actually take a look inside the one box, see what's going on. If you've been running it for a few weeks and hasn't been regen properly, we do like to clean everything, clean the filters, clean the DOCs, clean the SCR, just so you're at back at a good baseline and don't have any problems another month down the road, so. So to kind of recap here, with what we're seeing here, the first thing we're gonna do is obviously check the DEF and, and see if it's where it's supposed to, if it's contaminated or urea contents where it's supposed to be. If we don't see anything there, then we'll probably go ahead and dig into the one box, see what we got on that, check all the wiring, make sure there's no uh, bad connections, broken wires, anything like that, or any damaged sensors. Then after, when, once we do find the problem, you know, we have to correct everything, obviously. Then once, then we either do a SCR conversion efficiency test with jaw test or one of our other softwares. And that's the only way that you can clear this fault is it has to go through a complete test and pass that efficiency test or do a regen and be above 70%. Uh, CR Knox conversion efficiency. So, like I said, this is one of my favorite softwares here, uh, Jaw Test by Kajali. If it's something you guys are interested in, we are a uh, dealer for them, so you can reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to help you out. So, pretty much all I got for today, guys. Uh, hope this little information here might help you out in your endeavors. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell for the updates, and like the video. So, we'll see you next time.